Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with more 40K content. Today, I'm gonna to be tackling one of the beautiful new Stormcast miniatures that was very kindly sent to me by Games Workshop for review and to make some content and videos for you guys. If you guys have been around for a little while, you know that I did um, two very special weeks on my channel. I did Indominus week to get all my Indominus stuff out of the way and then straight into Leviathan week and I did a Leviathan week as well to get those two box heads done in week periods. So obviously for the Indominus box set, I had to do some Space Marines and a whole heap of Necrons. Um, and so I did that in a very short period of time and I used my Rust technique to basically create the illusion of Necron warriors, which have, you know, crawled out of old tomb worlds that haven't really been maintained to their full uh, potential. There's a lot of rust, a lot of corrosion and stuff like that. So I wanted to continue that aspect on and make the army quite large. It's quite an easy, quick and efficient way of painting Necrons. And although it might not make the perf most sense with specific named characters, obviously they're from different dynasties, they're supposed to be more kind of gleaming or perfect or anything like that that doesn't really bother me i can create my own narrative in my head as to why they are kind of rusty and uh, disheveled like the rest of the legion so that's what i'm going to do in today's video i'm going to take imitate the storm lord and i'm going to paint them up to uh, match in with my rusty necron legion before I get into the video, two quick messages. One, thank you patrons, you guys are amazing. Without you guys, I cannot keep the cameras rolling and the lights on, you're awesome. I really do appreciate all of your support. If you are interested in supporting the channel, that is the best way to do it. The links are in the description below. You get a couple of benefits like access to a private Discord server, you can talk uh, to about your hobby with me and about 200 other people. And also you get an extra video every single week. So that's 52 extra videos a year for becoming a member of the Patreon. And two, I've set myself a challenge of reaching 40,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you are on the fence about it, please do smash that button, support the channel and help us get there. We are well on our way now. It is going quite well. And if we keep this trend, we will indeed hit 40,000 by the end of the year. So uh, yeah, let's, let's hope we make it there. Okay, so without further ado, let's get stuck in and get painting the Stormlord. So this is him, Imhotep the Stormlord, absolutely stunning recreation of a fine cast miniature, which was fairly awful. The design is beautiful, but fine cast was uh, not. Um, but I did still run him in my old Necron army. So when I see that he has been redone in his uh, new glorious plastic, I of course had to add him into the force. Of course, previously this guy was considered to be the overlord of overlords. He was the one that ruled pretty much all of the Necron kind of forces. Or at least he was considered the largest powerhouse in the Necron dynasties. That's of course until the Silent King has returned. So I do believe there is currently some animosity between the two as to who is in control of all of the Necron dynasties. Of course, the Silent King is a slightly more powerful adversary. So I guess we'll have to wait and see how that uh, turns out. So the model got sprayed black and as you've seen I attached the cloak to a different uh, piece and I sprayed that a little bit different. I got black and then I got a kind of grey sear on top. Basically because I want to run like a turquoise contrast over those plates, his armoured plates or I don't know what kind of plates they are. Necrons have all sorts of crazy gizmos built into their their suits and their cloaks and stuff like that. I'm not 100% sure as to which one he's wearing. I presume with some sort of protectiveness. But it is a beautiful turquoise color and it will uh, contrast really nice with my rusty color scheme on the Necron body. So I definitely want to keep that like that. So the first thing I do with the body is I stipple in all of the uh, Rhinox hide, which is a dark, deep, rich, warm brown color. And I got that in all the bits that are supposed to be metallic. This is how I start all of my rust, pretty much any rust that I ever do. After that, I jump over to a quick uh, stipple of Riser Rust. And as you can see, you can grab any kind of messed up old brush that you have. Um, that's kind of frayed at the end the more kind of damaged and like unsmooth it is at the end the better for the kind of result that you're looking for and then yeah you just want to literally load it up with orange paint remove most of it kind of like a dry brushing technique and then you want to stab it at the miniature creating that kind of mottled orange effect across all of the armored parts of the model now obviously this guy can be as complicated or as intricate or as simple as you want him to make uh, my necron force is a, a force that i'm glad to have painted but I don't really take too much pleasure in painting Necrons. I much prefer more, um, I don't know, alive things, more skins and cloths to metallics. I'm, I'm, I think I'm better at painting them than I am metallics and stuff like that. So being able to kind of kill two birds with one stone, I get to have my Necron army fully painted, but not have it take an awful lot of time, I think is very important for me. Um, and it's something that I will continue to do um, with my entire Necron collection until it grows to quite a large scale. I basically want to have every unit um, that they sell on it. After that, I grab some Lead Belcher. 
and I dry brushed the entire piece with lead belcher. A little bit heavier than I did with my basic infantry. I want to return some of the silver to this model. The idea that maybe he has been looked after just a little bit better than the basic infantry. And it's a very, once again, simple and quick as you know, using the same brush that I've done for the entire first three steps of this model, which is just a haggard old large base coat brush. And as you can see, because there's so little um, silver paint on it, it's not going to any of the recesses or anything like that. It's just giving this beautiful dry brush technique across the entire body. I really like how this actually looks. Making sure not to miss the other parts of his shoulder, which is attached to the cape, and all of the little micro scarabs that are, are, are built throughout that as well. I kind of missed them at the start. I had to go back and rebrown them afterwards, so don't worry about it. It's actually two of them on the inside as well, so. After this, I started working on his base. I'm not going to go into details on how I did the base, as everyone will base their armies differently. I then grabbed some black Templar contrast, and I started to black in any of the other bits that I didn't want to be rusty. So, for instance, the... Uh, handle of his war glaive and then any kind of exposed cabling and stuff like that just to break up the uh kind of rusty brown color um a little bit so like i said the shaft of his war glaive and all the cabling and stuff that goes under his chest the cabling that connects his big lightning gauntlet uh, and any bits like that that you can find and uh, that you want to just kind of split apart from the other bits and uh, just do that with a coat of black very simple and straight over the existing color you don't need to do anything else with it contrast is such a versatile tool the more you play with it, the more you learn how to use it, and the more little hacks and tricks and stuff that you'll figure out to uh, help you get your paint jobs finished and fast. Now, there's an argument to be said about perhaps doing the uh, black here, this particular stage, before the silver dry brush, just to catch those edges again and add a little bit of highlight to it. Maybe that was the way to go. I quite like how it looks now. I'm okay with it. After that, it's time to move over to white. Whenever I'm working with white, I tend to go for the Pro Acryl Bold Titanium White. It flows really good, gives really good coverage. And for this, I want to paint everything that I want to be glowing green. And obviously, this is a Necron Overlord. He's quite a powerful thing. And basically, the way Necron works, Necron's work is, the kind of higher up the ranks you are, more important you are, or more powerful you are, the more glowy green bits you're going to have on the model. It's kind of a, a signifier of your power. And obviously, this guy's quite powerful. So he has quite a lot of bits and pieces that need to be done. So all of those are going to get hit with a coat of pure white. His eye lenses, all the glowing gems, his war scythe. Now, for his war scythe, I'm going to go for a feathering technique, which is finding a really fine pointed brush, loading with white paint, and then kind of scratching it down in a specific direction to create those choppy lines. I don't want to have a smooth white plate that i'm going to put green contrast over i want it to be kind of rough and haggard and you'll see why the difference that it will make this is one of those things again where because i've used contrast so much i have learned these little tips and tricks and this idea of feathering the white across the blade like i said not trying to get a full kind of saturated color you can see how i've done the top of the blade now it looks kind of ragged so after this i just grabbed corandrus green it's about 15 different awesome green contrasts now. Most of them will work for this. Just try and stay consistent across your army. Having said that, I don't think this is the same green I used for the first batch of my models, but it's neither here nor there, I guess. So paint all the glowy bits and all the bits that you've done in the white with this color now. Now, as you can see, over the gemstones in the center of the body, it goes over pretty quick. Over the blade, though, it does something magical. It literally, literally makes it look like it's shaded or arcing with energy. And really all we did was, like I said, feather with a bit of white and throw a green contrast over the top of it. These Necron blades can be uh, quite daunting as a thing to paint. And if you look up how to paint them, you'll find a million amazing videos. But these amazing videos are usually for quite high level painters. And I do not fall into that category. It would stress me out trying to do those like mirror blades or, you know, you airbrush this corner and then you, you know, you airbrush the bottom left corner and then you add these lines. No. Feather a bit of white, throw a green contrast on top of it and it's going to look awesome. At least awesome enough that it makes me happy. Okay, after that, it's now time to move over to that, that cape of his. And for this, I'm going to grab a pterodon turquoise contrast and throw that all over the cape. Nice coat, making sure that it doesn't pull too much on any one particular like segmented plate. I don't want it to pull like that. I want it to be quite a smooth coat the whole way across. So I will go a little bit slower with this contrast making sure to, to kind of push around, maneuver, or remove any excess contrast that starts to pull up. It's a very satisfying stage because this cape has so much texture. With those deep lines, it means it does just scream off the palm. As you see, I'm being careful not to go over those kind of like micro scarabs with the, the, the pterodon turquoise. I want the cape to be very much its own thing. Now 
This is one of the last steps that I'm going to do for painting up my particular um, miniature. And like I said, I am glad to have another Necron character painted off. I do still have a mountain of plastic Necrons that need to get put together and painted. I reckon if I could find a full day or two to myself, I could bash out the entire rest of the collection and have a particularly large force. But obviously I've glued his cape in place. I finished off his base and I'm going to call it finished here. I really like the finished look of him. Like I said, he's quite simplistic, but putting him on the tabletop, looking at him from kind of three feet away on a gaming table, I am going to be super satisfied. I think he definitely stands out with his giant war scythe and that cape. And he's going to look awesome mixed in with the rest of my force. Obviously, this is a slightly more unorthodox way of painting him, so I would love to hear your thoughts on it in the description below. If you like it, the kind of rusty style neck roads, do you think there's anything I should add? Do you think I went too simplistic on such an awesome character? Let me know. These are obviously the other two characters that arrived this week that I will have to paint up. I will probably do them across on my Twitch streams over the next couple of weeks, perhaps. I do a stream on Twitch every Tuesday and Thursday evening, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Irish time. You are all very much welcome to join along, get some hobby done, and talk uh, shop with me. Well, there we have it, guys. We managed to get the Stormlord painted with, I don't know, six, seven, eight paints, maybe. And only an hour or two of our time it means that uh, we get to have this awesome character on the tabletop and involved in our campaign and in our Necron Studio army. So I'm very delighted with this. Obviously I have two more characters still to go and I will do them over the course of the next couple of weeks. They probably won't be videos as it will pretty much be the same thing again. I will be doing them to match my Rust Legion and follow along. So I hope you guys found this video useful. I hope if you have a backlog of Necrons tucked under a bed for maybe the starter set from the Indominus starter set or from years past it doesn't matter you can consider getting them painted like this it's a very quick easy and effective way of getting some nice necrons on the table and get playing some games with them so make sure you give the video a like if you enjoyed it ask me any questions you want in the comments below make sure you subscribe to get us to 40,000 by the end of the year i appreciate you guys i'll see you in the next video